The first tip um, is filling the rifle into the stock. We want some height reference points. I've fitted this um, blind screw here, a uh, headless screw, and um, I'm going to use that to uh, line the rifle into the stock just to begin with, just giving us some ideas of where we're going. So I'll put that in place. Only partially into our prep. Now take a pencil, run your pencil through this area here. That marks where the very rear of your bedding is going to be. But after you've done that, remove the action and come in and make a pencil line further in. And this is going to be the height reference point for the rear of the action. So forwards of here you're going to dig in with your Dremel and um, deepen this by about 1.5 millimeters or roughly 60 thou and th this rear tip here is where the action is going to sit during the bedding to just to give you some form of a reference at the front of the action we're going to be using the plasticine dam and on a heavy barrel rifle we can take that a step further by having a dam here plus a small dam at the very tip of the forestock So if you look closely you'll see that uh, step is going down to a depth of roughly 60 thou. Just very carefully, she's using a tungsten tip on a quarter inch drive end grinder. Some of you will be wanting to use um, the cheaper Dremel units with a 3mm drive. Okay, yep. we'll just quickly check Steph's work, and um, you can see the piece at the end that she's left high. Here we go, job done. If you have a look in here, uh, Steph's ground out this Macmillan stock um, down through this area here, but she's left herself a reference point here which lets her know how deep she's gone. Now that she's finished this area, she's ground a bit off the pillar as well to drop the height. Um, now that she's finished, she'll start washing this out, so this will disappear and she'll go back here and um, do along the sides of the magazine well. But if you're not confident about doing a full length bedding job and you want to do a front and rear bedding job, then you can leave this in here and just have that as the finish of your bedding for this area. Um, now if we move back to the tang, on the Hauer actions, Sarko actions and Morza type actions, rather than leave your height reference point at the rear, leave your height reference point at the front, just here. Kind of a reversal of what we've got back along here and this other area through here, so we end up with these two height reference points. So you've got um, a couple of options there, so if you're doing a front and rear bedding job, um, you can leave this piece in here, but if you're doing a full length bedding job, Start with this as your reference point, grind out this area, and then commence working your way back along the magazine well. Okay, hope that makes sense. If you have a look through this area here, just here, you'll see that the stock sort of comes along parallel, and then it dips in, and then it becomes parallel again. Now Macmillan have done their best to um, customise this to the specs of the barrel given. But when we go to do a bedding job, um, the nicest, the cleanest line is to come through here and then just do a steady taper down. Um, you notice that some stock designs have a, a real step just here. Just wash that step out into a nice taper. So if I take this out and you have a look here, you see this sort of wonky bumpy line just here? You want to try and blend that out in just a, a nice clean straight line on both sides. Can I have a quick look, Steph, and see how it's looking? Yeah, see that's coming down nicely. Okay, that line is clean through there. One thing you would have noticed is that um, we had no uh, insulation tape or uh, aluminium tape along the top of the action. If you're a user with fairly low confidence, you want to tape everything up first all through here so that if you're working with power tools and they run over here, you don't damage your stock. Steph hasn't done it on this one because she's quite confident with her power tools. But um, 
if you do run tape over the top of this during your work make sure that you remove the tape and then reapply fresh clean tape just prior to bedding otherwise um, if you've got tape that's all chewed up along here from your work and then you attempt to dress it up for bedding that tape going to allow compound to leach all the way through it it's going to be a right mess so have a think about those two ways of doing it um, just make sure that you have a clean line of tape at the end of it Steph's in the middle of making up her plasticine dams and one thing she's doing is she's making dams at the bottom of the stock so that um, there's not so much of a mess to clean up at the bottom if any compound leaches through the um, holes in the action so she'll just gradually fill these up with plasticine poke a hole in them and then round the hole off quite a clever little trick Steph now most of you will be using straws to act as guides with the uh, top of the straw taped off and the sides of the straw taped up to fill the holes and they're your guides for when you drop the action in place but if you have a look at what Steph's doing she's making up teardrops of plasticine she's going to put those here we go into the hole see how that fits and um, she's actually going to fill the hole with um, bedding compound um, because we've developed an eye for where the stock has, where the action has to be dropped down into the mortise we don't need those straws as guides so that's something you can do with experience okay Steph's done her electrical taping along the um, top line of the stock this is very important especially for painted stocks um, you want to make sure that the electrical tape goes to the edge of the stock without going into the uh, stock channel and also without being too far away from the edge of the stock channel. Now Steph has left a gap so fine it's just a few thou wide this gap and in doing so she's um, set herself up for a, um, a good finish. Now note on the ejection port that tape tends to try and lift so she's used electrical tape at each end of the ejection port where the tape wants to lift and down here at the tang she's come across here because the electrical tape will try and lift there so those are two places to make sure you've got that tape down hard and then through here she's got that line nice and close so that will result in a good bedding job the other thing to be mindful of is the pasta scene's got a lot of oil in it when you've finished doing all your preparation clean all this area here with an alcohol spray something like a brake cleaner a parts cleaner um, and that will stop those oils from migrating in there and see little areas like this which is just a small area we're going to bed you don't want any problems in that area so make sure that it's degreased properly also the electrical tape doesn't stick very well if there's oily residues from plasticine so it's just something to be mindful of just keep degreasing as you go Steph's got her front dam and it's quite a long dam we've got a semi varmint contour barrel so I've put in um, a small dam up here but you've got to make sure that this dam does not conflict with this dam otherwise it'll really upset the apple cart so make this little dam up here if, you, if you're doing a heavy barreled rifle and you want an extra dam to make sure that there's no stress on the job just make sure that little dam's small and that it doesn't interfere with the, this dam here you, you want an absolutely stress free bedding job okay very good I'll carry on Okay, now fitted skirts for the compound to leach out of. These will just be ripped off as soon as we um, as soon as we put the action down into the job. We'll give it a basic clean up, and then um, pull the skirts, and then give it a final clean up. Note that I've put a secondary dam up the front here, and I've got pull tabs on my masking tape just here, so I can fill up to this height about here. Let that compound settle down. And then after it's um, done its thing and we're ready to put the action down, we'll put the action down to the barrel touching just there. And then we'll pull that tab and then slowly put the action down the rest of the way. That way we don't lose any compound. I think the optimal depth for this grind through here for thickness of compound would be about 1.5 millimetres or roughly 60 thou. You can go down as far as 80 thou if you want to. But if you go further down you've got a very large fill and sometimes that can cause problems um, you can cause air bubbles to occur because you've just 
got such a bulky area you may have mixed air into the compound during the mixing and this is the sort of thing that can happen if you go too thin less than uh, one millimeter especially along the side walls here you run the risk of it being too brittle I mean the compound has to have some uh, volume to have some strength to it some some mass so try and work towards that um, 1.5 millimeters or 60 thou and out to about 80 thou in the barrel channel here you will end up with more compound um, it's just the nature of the beast and especially through the sides of the barrel here because there's a, a step down from the uh, diameter of the action okay <clears throat> just have a quick look at this um, release agent that I've put onto the action one important tip is when you're applying the release agent or our release agent dab it on don't don't brush it on or stroke it on I've just been using the sponge the sponge here and just dabbing it on lightly just dab 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 and just keep working it and working it and working it until you get this sort of speckled patina and um, it'll, it'll I know it looks a bit uneven but it's actually the ideal finish and then um, that'll just pull away nicely sometimes if you do stroking actions you can cause it to separate so just keep working at that until it's starting to tack off a bit and then allow it to sit if you've got a heat gun then tack it off uh, yeah dry it right off with a heat gun okay so one last little tip um, after you've done your release agent if you want to you can dust on powdered graphite with a soft brush so I'm just going to liberally dust that on here do all these areas through here and that just provides a super super slippery finish now if you're a nervous user this is a good way to give yourself a bit of confidence that you're not going to get your action trapped in there that nothing diabolical is going to happen you're not going to lose your rifle and have to go and buy something else so it's just a nice way of ensuring that um, everything is definitely going to come come to pieces and it, the graphite gets into all those little nooks and crannies that you may be worried about where things may lock so as you see I'm using quite a bit of graphite just dusting it across here I'll give it a final blow down when I'm done but um, it's just a nice little extra thing you can do just keep going till you get a nice gunmetal grey finish and then you know she's really really slippery okay, so that's just powdered graphite and a soft brush as you can see here I'm, I've folded the uh, edge of the container over I'm pouring the compound in and I'm just letting it gradually migrate to fill voids just stop there for a moment we'll just let that compound run and ease into that recoil lug recess so you can collapse the mouth of that container into a point and that'll really um, let it pour in, in, a, in a drizzle so we're just dropping the, the um, action down into the mortise now and you can see the front dam here I'm just about to pull that down there we go so now I come down nice and slowly and I'm going to put thumb pressure here at the rear and uh, just checking to make sure that the compound is leaching out evenly on all sides which it is Go. So now we'll do a clean up along here, clean up most of the surplus, and then pull the skirt, and then we'll put the bungees in place. On the M700, it's very important to clean up the bead at the tang, otherwise it'll become trapped in place. Also, um, over here, this point, where are we just here? I noticed that it was higher on the stock, so we've got to make sure that this is cleaned right out so that the stock doesn't trap the action and then this whole area doesn't break out when we release it okay guys I'm just about to lose our light here um, time for knockoff soon you can see that I've cleaned up the tang at the rear now the next piece to clean up is the ejection port and make sure that that see the steel of the action make sure that the compound doesn't leach over and trap it in place as you can see now the compound has leached over and the action is indeed trapped so I need to get in there with a cotton bud and clean up all of that area but along here 
I'm going to leave the bead of compound relatively proud. That way um, we've got something to work with when we come back. There's going to be no suckbacks or anything like that. You see I've used um, inner tube bungees. That just minimises stress to the action. Okay, With our headless screws, we'll end up with a lovely bedding job. Okay, we're just on last light now. I've cleaned up that bead along through the ejection port area. The um, job is in place, there's hot water bottles around it. I'm going to put tin foil over the top of the um, metalwork thing so the hot water bottles don't stick. You can see they've stuck in the past. And then I'm going to um, put the hot water bottles all around the job, blankets over the top, and they can sit like that. Um, I don't actually use a hot box, I don't see any need for it. Um, this method works quite fine for me, so I'm happy with that. And I can move these around the house to different places if I need to, or through the workshop, wherever I want to, so good as gold. Okay, we've pulled this um, M700 Macmillan job and I've uh, commenced sanding the top line. You'll notice that um, I've sanded to the point where you can just start to see the insulation tape show, electrical tape. And um, from there we should be able to peel that um, tape up and just break off that line and it'll leave us with a nice clean edge and we won't have to do any touch up paint work on this stock. One thing I didn't get to discuss um, when I knocked off yesterday because the light was failing us was that when you're doing um, these areas through here, when, when you clean it up as the compound's tacking off, wait till it goes to a toffee like consistency and then get in and just make sure your beads are all clean, make sure that there's no trap points here, no trap points here. We had a trap point back here, I made sure that was clear. Um, if you want to use a hot knife and that will help you um, really clean up those edges. So you can heat a, a, a flattened or flat end knife or spatula, you can heat it up with a, um, a blowtorch or a gas cooker or a heat gun, whatever you like, and that'll give you um, something to work with that'll cut into the to, to the toffee-like compound. Okay, we'll carry on and see how the job turns out. This is the um, second bedding job for this rifle. The first bedding job I did was in the original stock for the client. The rifle was a 3006, Remington 700 3006. And the rifle was very accurate then. So um, now with this stock, I think it'll be a little bit nicer to shoot because of the um, straight recoiling stock design as opposed to the Monte Carlo stock that the rifle originally came in. Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed those tips and tricks. Just remember guys to be patient when you're working through your jobs. And if you get stuck, get your wife to do it. <laughs>